Namaste, and welcome to the 11th episode of Ulladu Narpadu. And this is the second of uh, four episodes about knowledge. And the short version is, the quality of knowledge is determined by who knows. The quality of seeing is determined by who sees. The nature of the seer is revealed by what is seen. And the bottom line is, if we're seeing objects separate from the self, then we're in illusion. So let's take a look at the verse. Knowing other things without knowing oneself, the mind or ego, who knows the objects known, is only ignorance. Can it ever be true knowledge? When, through the inquiry, who am I, the individual who knows the objects known, one knows the non-existence of the knowing ego, the base for knowledge and ignorance about objects will cease to exist. So this is the difference between someone who is in ignorance and someone who is self-realized. Someone who is in ignorance is aware of objects, other things, and not aware of his own self, <laughs> who he is, what he is, where from this self arises and where it passes away. So one who is in knowledge may still perceive but he doesn't perceive objects. He perceives himself as consciousness in all. That's the difference. That's what makes someone enlightened. Because actually, everything we see and experience is nothing but consciousness. Whose consciousness? My consciousness. <laughs> I have consciousness. Others don't. At least not as far as we know. As long as we remain separate, we will see other things as separate. As soon as we realize the self, then we become everything because everything that we experience is nothing but consciousness. And consciousness is only mine. Consciousness is always personal. Even God shows up in our consciousness as personal. And God is the self, Brahman, the universal being. Try to understand. So last time we were talking about Mula Pariyaya Sutta. Mula Pariyaya means the root structure or the root sequence. And it gives in detail how we create the I, the ego, the sense of a separate self, a separate being, separate from Brahman. Of course, <laughs> That is unreality because there is nothing separate from Brahman. Brahman is everything. That's like the bubble in the ocean saying, I'm separate from the ocean <laughs> when he's nothing but ocean. And as soon as the bubble pops, there's nothing but ocean. Similarly, as soon as we let go of this sense of separate being, or separate identity, then we know we're nothing but Brahman. We're nothing but the whole itself. And everything that shows up in our space of awareness is also our self. Because, again, we are aware of nothing but consciousness. 
This is very difficult <laughs> for an egoistic person to conceive or accept because the process of I making and my making, which is described in Mula Pariyaya Sutta that we went into last time, has become a habit. And it's become so deeply ingrained that one is totally unconscious that he's doing it. Yet it's going on with each and every sense perception. And if you examine this, you will find that every second there are dozens, if not hundreds, of sense perceptions. And in each one of them, we inject an overlay of I and mine. Huh? Remember that song, Painted Black? <laughs> I see a red sign and I want it painted black. That's all it is. We're painting the world, painting every perception with this idea of the ego. And because of that, we experience alienation, separation, huh? dissociation, and so many things. And in extreme cases, uh, psychopathy. So instead of being a psychopath, one should become an enlightened person. And then all this suffering will disappear. It'll just evaporate like it was never there. This is the purpose of self-realization. Uh -huh. The motivation for it comes from the fact that we're all suffering. And the more egoistic we are, the more we feel separate from everything, and the more we suffer. Because after all, we are a person. But when we have an ego, we see ourselves in a world of objects. Even other people are objects to us. But in self-realization, we see ourselves in a world where we are not separate, where everything is part of us. Everything is part of Brahman. Everything is conscious. Everything is alive. Now, of course, modern civilization has come up with various demeaning terms for this, such as animism, tribalism, pantheism, and so on, and criticized ancient tribal peoples as being primitive. But actually, they may all be enlightened. Now, if something like the spontaneous enlightenment that Ramana Maharshi experienced happened to a person in contemporary society today, they'd probably wind up in the psych ward and be tortured with drugs until they either became brain dead or uh, agreed to construct a false personality again. Because our definition of mental health is a healthy ego that's adjusted to the world. And the world is very sick. The symptom of the sickness of the human world is that we are destroying the environment. We are sawing off the branch on which we're sitting. We're destroying our very uh, means of life. And yet, somehow or other, no one can seem to muster the will to stop it. That's sick. That is psychosis. That is psychopathy. So it's all due to ego. And ego is false. Because if you look into it and you see how you are applying this ego, like painting everything with the nature of an object, that's false. That's wrong. That's sick. I come right out and say it. So we have to cure ourselves from this sickness of alienation. And how we do it is simply by seeing the truth. And the truth is we create this ego many times a second. And just like the frames of a movie, we string together those isolated creations of an ego 
into something that seems like a continuous existence. But actually, the, the continuity is only an illusion. In fact, the existence of the individual is also an illusion. But since the illusion is repeated many times a second, it has the illusion of continuity and reality, just like a movie, like a movie projected on a screen. The ego is the projector, the mind is the light, huh? and the screen is the consciousness. Consciousness simply reflects whatever is put in front of it. So if you put a flashing light with different pictures, that's what it'll, pre that's what it'll reflect. So we're watching this movie, uh, and we're fascinated with it. And the mind even offers up comments, you know, like somebody sitting there munching popcorn and watching our life and going, hey, that was a good comeback. And, oh, you really screwed up that time, didn't you? Making all these supercilious comments about our experience, about ourself. This is the ego. This is the mind. And it's torture. Huh? First of all, it's an effort to have to do all this extra mental work. Now, of course, it's become a, a habit. It's become a bot, basically. Huh? We create it when we're very, very young in order to survive in a sick society. And then it becomes automatic and unconscious, but it still requires effort. And that effort reduces the amount of energy and attention that we have for being alive, for being real. So it's like an energy sucking machine that's stuck on automatic pilot and we don't know how to turn it off. So that's why in future episodes, we're gonna go deep into the yoga, the Maha Yoga, as Ramana called it, of how to turn this machine off, how to stop this runaway artificial intelligence computer that we've accidentally created in our mind, or as our mind. So uh, a couple of points. So there are no objects. If one is seeing objects separate from oneself, one knows he is sick. He needs the medicine of the silence of the realized being to bring him back to reality, to wake him up, to show him what is real again. And then by taking this medicine steadily for a long time, huh? it's like, don't forget to take your meds, right? Meditate every day, <laughs> do your sadhana. You finally get to the point where you realize this object is an illusion. If the object is an illusion, so is the subject that sees it. To go back to the main point here, that what is seen reveals the nature of the seer. So if we see objects, if we see separation, if we see differences, these are all an indication that we are ill and we need treatment. We need to take our medicine. So the medicine is this inquiry, who am I? Atma vichara. So by atma vichara, we come to realize the nature of the seer. And of course, when the seer is the ego, we're going to see all this separation and duality. And we have to realize that not only the objects, but the seer also is an illusion. That's how we know we're on the road to recovery. Om Tatsat Om Harihi Om